Good girl. Good girl. As promised. This is Lyra. Mm -hmm. You watch the other video on the English saddle. Pan, this is his sister. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set in a historically correct continental. Show you guys how to shave in the pattern just like I did with the saddle and um, hopefully help you guys get started with that or maybe teach you some new tricks that you didn't know before. Um, but she is, um, she'll be 12 months old next month and we're not showing in UKC until September, so I'm going to go ahead and cut her into her adult trim. She's got a pretty good body, so I think it'll, it'll look fine on her. Um, got a really skinny little poodle um, that doesn't like to eat and doesn't really have good bone, then probably Continental is not a good choice. Um, but I think it's going to look pretty good on her. She's got a nice little shelf and she's got, she's got some pretty good muscle tone for her age, so I think it's going to look alright. So the first thing that I do is I set in the uh, bracelets and shave up to uh, right about here just to get all that hair off and then we figure out where we're going to place the rest of our shave lines. Shave up to right about where? Right about here. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, and then I shave up to right about here and we take all of that stuff off so we can figure out where we're going to set the um, rosettes and where we're going to set her jacket line. So this is a the wall Arco set on a, uh, a 30 setting and she's already used to getting her face and everything in her feet shaved with a 30 blade so I'm sure it'll be fine. We're going to take all of that stuff off from above where I know the line is going to be for her bracelets. And the trick to doing this, if you're worried about it, you can start off using a 10 blade. Um, the trick to doing this is to let your, see how light I'm holding this clipper? Like, I'm not gripping it like this. The trick to doing this without nicking or burning a dog is let the clipper work for you. Gentle, 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 and if I don't, I can't really see, I'm worried about like flaps of skin and stuff, I just kind of skim the hair off so I can see it and then I go back and take it off again. Muscle yeah, she's like, she's probably going to, and don't be surprised, I find this a lot you guys with the first time that you set in a continental on a dog that's used to having hair. They act weird, they chase their butt, they do fun because they're, they're just not used to the air touching their hiney. So um, don't be super duper surprised if they act a little weird after you shave all this hair off. Okay, so you shave the the inside and the outside. So I'm going to get the inside of the other leg from over here. Because I can see it really good from underneath if I just lift her other leg. So that saves me from doing a lot of bending and trying to lean over and cranking her leg the wrong way. You know, just lifting it straight up and yeah. maybe out a little bit, but you don't want to do this number um, you can pull it back this way. As long as it's a natural position and the dog isn't really fighting you, then it's comfortable for them. So when the dog's fighting you, that means it's probably more uncomfortable than, for more them. More than likely, yes. Some dogs are just weird about you picking their legs up and such, but I mean, I know these guys, I bred them and I'm raising them, so I know them pretty well, but if you're talking about pet dogs, then yeah, you want to be... Um, conscious at all times of what you're doing and just try to make sure that you're not making that dog uncomfortable. Right. 
And as you can see, she's starting to come in. She's getting her, she's coming into her first season. So she's kind of like, uh, why are you touching her? I feel funny back there. But you want to go against how the hair lays. So sometimes you have to go in these little cowlick areas. You have to go backwards. So you get it as short as possible. So now I have the hair out of the way. The hot joint is here. This little bone that sticks out, that's the hot joint. We want that bracelet to be about one finger above that hot joint. So when you hear people say one finger, it's you lay the finger you're going to lay your finger this way, right at the hot joint. For a mini, it's about a finger and a half, and for a standard, it's two to two and a half, depending upon the height of the dog. But that's just like a, a general idea of where it's kind of typical for you to put that line. I know. It feels weird, doesn't it? What am I doing? Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to do that over here, too. Hot joint. Put your finger there. I just kind of pinch my fingers together like that. Gotcha. And that kind of gives me a... So she knows I'm holding her leg. Little 
pocket phones that are right up here. That's where the back of your rosette should be. So when we're making the rosette, the round little rosettes, if you, if you run your fingers up, you can feel those two little hip bones right up here. So if you have a dog with a decent tail set, she's holding her tail up. And you'll find those little hip bones. That's where the back of the rosette should be. So you can go ahead and shave right up to right behind those little bones. This is how we start setting, that's how I start setting rosettes. Okay, so the little bones are right here, so I go, they're like right here, and so I go right up to right behind there. And then you can take all of this off the point area down here. Don't go too far forward because you're not exactly sure where you want to set your jacket just yet. So you can just pull some of this up about, about halfway up her side. adjustments to be made once you get things set in sometimes you have to move them around so that's why one of the reasons we're doing this now is because we're not showing her this is July the 14th we're not showing her until September so now I'm going to take a look at her I'm going to say, well, I think that's pretty good. I think that's where I'd like the jacket to be. It's usually Show us the jacket right one more past. Time. If you feel the dog right here, feel where the last rib is. It should be just behind the last rib, the top of the last rib, which is about where it is. Perfect. So now that I kind of have an idea of where I want that to be, she's such a busy body. Okay. Now that I have an idea, is she even starting to look more square now with all that hair off? <laughs> I take my scissors just like I did with the English saddle and I make my line. So I kind of know where I'm going with all this hair. You gotta set that in. And you can actually even do that with your scissors. You can make the line like this instead of with the clipper if you want to. See? It's up to you.
the same thing. Here on a line. Get that hair out of the way. tell she's never had this done before because she is trying to figure out what in the heck we are doing. Now we've kind of set that line. We know kind of where we want that line to be. Now we have to split this. It's this little turtle thing we got going on up here. So what we want to do is we want her to be stacked up nice and straight. So everything is lined up. And all we want to do is just follow her spine. A straight line right up in between. And you can do that just with the scissors. Make a little tiny, I'm doing this number. Make a little tiny snips just to create that little line up to the other line that we just made. So now we kind of have a little we got a little line going on right there. Can you see it? Uh, yes. That looks good. Okay. And again, just going to take the clipper and just clean that line we made with the scissors. Make it more defined. I'm just kind of wiggling like this back and forth. So I'm just making a little tiny line. So it's cleaner than the scissors. Come on, Stop. Thank you. Good girl. So if she's only 11 months old, I think she's doing pretty good. And she's coming in season, so she's being a little bit schmutzy. Okay, so now we have that. All right, so generally what I do now is I start trying to clean up these edges with the scissors so I can see. I just come right around the edge of where I trimmed like this. to see the shape kind of starting. So even though we kind of made a square with our scissors, we can make this round by trimming the top. Does that make sense? Yes. So trimming this part round. And you can clean the rest of it up later. So we're trying to get our shape and we're trying to separate it from the jacket a little bit. And cleaning up our little lines. You can start to see the little shape coming together. So again, we do the jacket straight up and down, and we do the edges of this straight up and down. Don't go this yet. Don't go over the edges. Just come right around the outside. And 
you don't lose any links. I call them, should be up here on top. Now, in UKC and in AKC, I believe, they are optional, but most people don't leave them out. Because if you do and you have a dog that's not really square, you make the dog look even longer by taking them off. But they are, I, I believe they're optional. So if you had a short dog, you can make it look longer got, by taking yeah, them like off? Yeah, like I could, I could take hers off. Well, you don't want to make them look longer. Okay, even if they're short, no. for some reason their confirmation is too no, short. No, 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 that would be really weird. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if you've got a dog that's that short backed, then there's probably something not quite right. But you can't. If you've got a dog with a nice short back like her, see, she's very square. She's literally the same length from here to here as she is from here to here. So she's what we call very square. So if you if you took them off, you wouldn't really, you know, make her look any longer. But if you have a dog that's already too long this way, by taking them off, you create the illusion that they're even longer. Okay. So most of the time, you will not see them showing without butt cushions or what do you call them? People call them rosettes, but whatever. Alright, so that's my trick is to cut those lines in and then to just start trimming around the edge until you get what you want as far as making them look round. And then what I do is I comb everything this way and I trim it off the bottom. And then you'll always get like these little square corners right on the edges. Because that's how your clipper works is in squares. So you just have to kind of take those off. off the point of the mountain. And then sometimes you look at it and you think, well, it looks kind of a little bit too 
elongated and not round enough. So you just have to keep rounding it until you get your shape. And then sometimes you have to take a little bit more off on the corner in order to get it rounder. That's why I leave that until I get done with my scissoring. Because then I can see exactly what I need to round with the clipper around the edge. And then you just, like everything else, just keep picking at it. Just keep taking little bits off. So you get your nice round little shape. like when you just do the clipper part. And this is what it looks like after you're done scissoring. Until the next time you bathe and dry because then stuff will stick out and you got to scissor it again. that was for scissoring. Uh, Just a rough guess. Oh, I don't know. Both of them all together, if I wasn't talking and teaching and just setting it in the first time, maybe a 15 minutes. Um, now that they're set, um, I'll give her a bath every week and then probably every two or three weeks I'll do the reshave and just keep it set. And it really won't take me very long at all. It's just the actual setting in the pattern that takes a good bit of time because you you have all that hair to work around and trying to get around it and then trying to um, talk to everybody and teach how to do it at the same time. But every time you bathe and dry, little hairs will poke out everywhere and you'll just keep trimming it Okay. Pause for just a minute. Okay. Oh, <laughs> good job. Well, too late now. Yeah. I can show you. Okay, show us what okay, you were talking about. Okay, see how this skin kind of hangs down right here? Yes. I'm experienced enough I can tidy along that without too much worry, but when you first start doing it, just shave up to like right here. And then what you can do is on most dogs, if you lift them up, see how it flattens out? Yes. Then you can just come along here real gentle and get it from that direction. And you can also get this stuff from here. Keep you it. can go this way because you've got all of that stuff is all scratched out. You can go this direction. Keep them nicking over. Right. Because you're using such a short blade. This is a 30 backwards. Yes. Did I say that good? Yep, then it showed up good. Okay. All right, so then the next thing you have to do is, um, of course, I already did their face, feet, and tail, and all that after the bath, because there's another video on that. But the next thing you have to do is you want to set the, um, 
want to set the front bracelet and your jacket so that way when you scissor your jacket this is all set in so you know that's the next thing I that's usually the next step that I take um, because once I have this shaved off I can see exactly how short her body really is and if I need to take more off here or more off here or what I need to do so I always set in the rear and then I set in the front and then I do the middle because that pulls everything together does that make sense yeah I do that on almost all of my any kind of a show trim so we're going to do just like we did on the English saddle we're going to go above where we know we want it to be because you can't put it back on you can always take more off same place as the English yes it's the exact same so where is that just in case they don't watch that video you want your front bracelet to be even with the back of your back bracelet okay so once I stack her up, I'll measure that again so I can see where it'll exactly will be. It'll be a little bit lower than what I have, which is what I want because, like I said, you can, you can take it off. You can't put it back on. So I know that's the back of the back bracelet. It's going to be a little bit lower than what I have. Gotcha. should be even. Everybody says, oh, the, it's even with the back bracelet, and they go like, their eye draws them to here, which puts it much lower, and then you get this little tiny bracelet in the front that's weird, and you can't figure out why. It's because your front bracelet should be even with the back, back and not the front. of the back bracelet. The back of the back bracelet. Not right, because so it's higher, because this right. is, the front is lower, and it makes the front one too small. So I always go above where I know I really want it because I got to get this hair out of the way. I just go straight up to the elbow and stop. And I don't get super duper picky. I'm just shaving basically around the leg so I can see where I'm going. Now you can see her elbow. Right up to the elbow and stop. And see all this hair here grows that direction so you have to turn around and go back the other way in order to get the same length because you're going against the grain of the hair jacket up above the elbow and I've left room here so I can lower this bracelet to be exactly where I want it to be. I'm not too low and making this one too small and then it looks like this little donut instead of a bracelet. So that's the reason I shave right there. So I can see what I'm doing when I'm setting this in and then like like I say once you can, once you've got it set in you're pretty good. You can just follow your own lines after that. It's just the whole setting in that's such a kind of a chore when you first start doing it. Okay. And her coat is a little bit better than her brother's. And then she does, she does have a pretty good shelf in the rear. She's just kind of swollen right now because she's coming in season, I think. So what I do is I take my comb and I place it right there at the top, the back, and I just kind of pull it forward so I can see. And actually, I think it's about right. I'm going to stack her up straight and make sure I don't want her slouching.
Yeah, I'm gonna leave it right there for now because I can always adjust it later. Okay. So, and that's that's the joy of it. You can always you can always adjust it later if you don't take off too much air. So now I'm just gonna take this stuff right off the bottom again, so I can see where I'm going. And then I'm gonna go shave the other side. but I'm just I'm just pushing the clipper up and stopping. I'm not scooping out, I'm not going any further than just up and stop. That way you don't scoop off a whole bunch of hair that you rather didn't go bye bye. Kinda helps you set your line too. short this way and really kind of dumpy and a lot of people leave way too much underneath here and if you pull that all the way up to the elbow it basically forces you to trim that in does that make sense yes so when you shave all of that up all the way up like it's supposed to be then you can't like your eye can't let you leave all of this stuff down here you have to tighten it right and your, your brain just keeps going that doesn't look right so it, to me that's what helped me when i first started doing it because i was leaving way too much hanging off the front so now i'm gonna set in um by her neck and all of that like we did with the yeah. so so I just take the ear and I move the ear back and I hold it with my finger I don't pull it I just hold the tip of the hair with my fingers so it's out of the way because if you pull the ear you change all of this watch it move see yeah so you just want the ear either out of the way like I do, or you can put a little band on it and band it over here to the other ear if you want to, but just make sure you're not pulling on the actual ear. Oops, now I missed the tangle. Baby. Okay. Alright, 
So we're going to set this neck in. Same, it's the same jacket that's on everything. If you're doing a big, huge continental, it's just a little bit bigger, but it's the same shape. So we go straight out from the neck like this. Set that neck back into the shoulder. Get it from this side. You'll notice her curves are curved away from the dog. Oh yeah, I, fl I flip them around backwards, or you can use you can use straight shears if you want to. It just comes straight out like this and then around. But I just I I'm so used to using my curves for everything. That's what I do. But it's not a it's not a requirement to use your curves to do it. It just to me makes it easier. I just wanted to know wanted to know that the curve is the opposite way on it. Yeah. Otherwise you'll cut into the neck line, right? Right. Yeah. If you uh, do this, see what happens? You're chopping all that hair right. off. Right. And you don't want to do that until you do this part when you're doing the historically correct head. Okay. Um, you know, and, and also when you're doing a full continental, you don't necessarily want to take all of that off because that all gets sprayed up and it's all like this long. Into the head. Right. So that all goes into your head. You can trim it, but you definitely don't want it that short. underneath the chest. And then you come from here and go all the way around depending upon the length that you want. And I definitely want her shorter, but I just want from out around from the neck. She's following the body right now. Yeah, and then into here. But I always, I always trim this line from back here so I don't pinch it. Because when you pinch it really tight, that's when you make them look, you make them look really pinched in here. You make them look waspy, like they're too skinny in the middle. That's how you lose this edge right here. So I want her to be a lot shorter. shorter than that. Okay, so then once you, sorry I have to pull her so I can see. Once you've got this kind of set in in the front, then you can pull this in from the rear. Just trim straight out at first. Do this that's how you get this too flat and it gets too pinched and then you lose your jacket so always trim this straight up and down first and if you're doing a full continental you stop about here and don't trim this because that all goes up trim like this. Some people go like this, but don't do like this. Because then again, you're taking off. You want to trim that, but you don't want to lose the whole thing. This is 
is like a half moon shape up to the elbow. <laughs> Heavy side. Oh my gosh. You just have to keep combing and combing and combing. And then like I said, every time you bathe them and blow them out, they're gonna pull out more hair. So if you're getting ready to show, ideally try not to set this in a week before you go because you're gonna get to the show and give them a bath and there's gonna be hair sticking out everywhere and you're gonna be like, what the heck happened? Again, this underneath here is really, really short. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's like a quarter of an inch of hair. If you've got good chest, you don't need a lot of hair under there. If you don't have a chest, or if they're still really young and this chest is sunken in and you, it's not down here, you can leave more hair. But if you've got good chest like I do, then you really don't you don't want to leave too much because it makes them look short and dumpy if you leave too much. I've had a couple that I take like a, a five blade to underneath there. of chest. They have good lung capacity. That's why you want plenty of chest. Especially on the, the minis and the standards. The better chest you have, the less possibility for um, bloat. Because there's, there's room in there and everything is down where it's supposed to be. You get, you get a lot of, I think a lot of the ones that I see that get bloat are very narrow in the chest and that's because there's no room up here and everything gets mashed together back here and I really feel like that's part of part of the reason for bloat. It's not, you know, they never, you can't say exactly what causes it all the time but I do find that the ones that don't have good chest tend to have a much better chance of getting bloat than the ones that have plenty of chest. Okay. Woo! Thunder! Thunder. Much hair. Much hair, girlfriend.
too. But again, that's all part of figuring out where you have to set it on that particular dog. If you've got a dog that has like really, really long legs and a high square body, you may not necessarily have to pull up that high. But you don't want it to look like a little sleeve hanging down either. Because she has plenty of chest, that's literally like a seven blade. Ah, okay. The chest is nice and short, guys. Yeah. I have people tell me all the time, hey, you can't take it that short. Well, if you got plenty of chest, you pretty much have to, otherwise you got hair hanging underneath here. And then it looks too low. And then it looks way too low. This stuff sticking out on the side. Just go all the way around. Take that off. And how long did you compete nationally for? Oh, I started in 2006, and I finished in a division in 2014. When I, that was my last competition. And then you started teaching. The and then I started, education. yeah, then I started teaching um, here in Jacksonville, Florida. I started teaching, and we now have, I believe, four uh, national dog groomers, nationally certified master groomers here in Jacksonville now, which is wonderful. And you were one of the first to be there. I was the first one in Duval County. In Duval County. I think it's a little too big. So, we're just going to lower it a little bit. About a quarter of an inch is all. So I just feel like that's just too big for her with this uh, modified um, continental that we're doing. I'm just going to lower it a little bit. So I'd like her to look a little bit taller too. Now we kind of have to do it again a little bit. Turn it all up. Trim off the top. Oops, missed a spot. So trying to film. <laughs> <laughs> Bracelets on a toy are the exact same shape, etc. 
as a mini or a standard. They just look smaller and rounder because they are smaller. Turn it all up. Trim straight off the top. Hard for me to reach that spot from a skin. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. I'm still a little bit taller. Take about another quarter inch off. But like I said, once you once you get your line set, as long as you keep it. Now this rule goes for the Miami trim or any other any other trim you're doing. Uh, some of the old-fashioned trims that have bracelets, etc., etc. The rule the rule for height is is the same. It's, it's all based on the the height of the dog, and it's always. It, it should always be approximately the same height as the back of the of the rear bracelet. And they're never ever ever perfect the first time you do them. I don't care who you are. All up. Trim off the top. I'm at an angle towards the front though on the back. And then I take this part off. Once again, it's never ever perfect the first time you do it. If you see some of these, if you see somebody doing a video and it's perfect the first time they do it, they either do it every single day because all they ever groom is poodles or they're cutting that video and putting it back in where it's perfect. And I don't believe in that because I believe everybody makes mistakes you end up setting something wrong that has to be fixed or adjusting something because you feel like this looks too long or that's too short or whatever but if you follow the basic rules even on your uh, if you're doing a pet dog trim even if you're taking like a clipper comb to this area and these are really short because you know they don't want to brush it or whatever but if they want this pattern as long as you set the pattern correctly it's going to look decent. 
Um, it's when you end up with your, your rosettes way back here or way down here or your your bracelets are too small or, you know, everything gets out of proportion. It starts looking out of whack. Again, when you have puppy coat too, you have to keep adjusting it um, as their adult coat comes in too because the texture starts to change. Now my toys are usually pretty mature um, structure wise by the time they're about 8 to 10 months old. So their structure really doesn't change much but their body fills out a little bit more, um, the chest can drop a little bit more, um, some different things like that. We have had a few put on a couple, you know, like a half inch or so around 10 months old in height, so that can change where you put things. But in general, my toys are done by the time they're about eight to 10 months old. She's 11 months old, so. And what year did you have one of the top four poodles in the country that was your breeding? Oh gosh, I don't remember. Um, it was UKC, um, I want to say, I don't know, when did we go to Michigan to premiere? Well, the premiere, that was, uh, ooh. 2000 and well last year Jen 11? last year Jen was number eight so we had one last year that was number eight um, but before that we weren't showing for a while um, I want to say That's what I'm thinking. That's what I want to say. I want to say 2012 is what is what feels right, but I can't exactly. Remember. So we had a we had I think we had two top tens that year um, that we went to uh, premiere. We went to Michigan and Kalamazoo and went to premiere. Got invited to top ten there, and then we got invited in. Uh, 2018 for Jen. Okay, so the tail, um, she has a natural tail. I did not dock this litter, and I also left her dew claws. Oh, nobody <laughs> panic. It's not the end of the world. Um, but still, the same, it's the same rule of thumb. The tip of the tail, you want even with the occiput, which is that little bump right at the back of their head, that bumpy bone back there. So since she has a natural tail, I try to get it as close to the tip as possible on the end. Because I don't want it to be out of proportion and be too long, especially with this um, historically correct head. I do that with my clippers. You can do it with your scissors if you want, but I feel like it's safer with the clippers because I can get, that's literally her tail right there. I can get it really close. That's her tail. That's how much hair is on her tail. I can get it really close without worrying. Whereas if I do it with the clippers because it's a big chunk of hair, I always worry that I'm going to cut the tail. And there's not much so, hair there because they're not that. Right. Her tail is that long. That's literally her. And it's actually about perfect. Yeah. I, I've decided I kind of like it. If I know I'm showing them UKC, I'm not docking them anymore. So like, I'm sitting there. Nope. Okay. So I do tails just like I do bracelets and uh, rosettes. Go all the way around the bottom and take it off flat. We already took the top off. We don't want this edge of the tail here to be touching your rosettes. 
what you hold your tail up. Right. It can be close, but you don't want it touching. And then all I do is I fluff it, and again, she's a puppy, so she's got some sparse coat. It's starting to fill in now, um, so I'm going to make it a little bit short. But then you just go around the outside and take off anything that's sticking out. And she carries her tail pretty straight when she does, so I'm just going all the way around normally. I'm not having to really adjust for anything with her. So anybody that wants to know how you do a natural tail, this is how you do it. Just like you do a dock tail. This just ends up being a little bit elongated. So I get that question a lot. How do I do a natural tail? Because a lot of people are opting, a lot of breeders are opting to stopping to stop docking tails. And it's not in the states here. It's not something we see a lot. So we get that. I get that question a lot. Looking gorgeous. She's getting there. Yeah. She says, I'm gonna feel funny with no hair on my butt. Okay. Alright, now we're gonna move to the head. Go so mold this out now that we've had it all mushed up in there. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've already cut her head in once, but you can see the really short areas here where she was rubbing it. Can you see how much longer this hair is than right here? Yes. Okay. That's where she was. I literally made this decision to do this head because of her. Because she, she rubbed that She rubs front. all of this out. She hates rubber bands. She doesn't right. matter. Yeah, well, it's a yep. Darker it doesn't matter how loose I do it. Right. It doesn't matter if I do bands or scrunchies or she hates it. And I still want to show her. So that's that's where I started looking around and started trying to figure out how to do this head. And I think she looks really cute in it. But I did already do it one time. It's just time to trim it again. So, all this up, we've got all this trimmed in and all this trimmed in, now all we have is just this right here. I flip my curved shears around and I aim for the top of the head first. up into the head. You don't want a big dent back here, right here. You don't want a big, huge dent. So that's why I do this. For me, doing it from the back is what keeps me from making a dent in that area. You find it easier to do with curves than straight? I do. Because of that curve to Yeah, it keeps me from... Cutting in? From cutting in. Flattening it. Yeah. And sometimes when I do that, see, now 
Now my rosettes are too big. So you can see how much higher the rosette is. It's not huge, but it's now that bit. I've done it, I'm yeah. definitely going to want to... So almost done over here. That's a great view. I'm going to want to tidy those down just a little bit more because I don't want them sticking up and ruining her outline, her profile. So I'm going to take those off. All i got to do is just take off the top a little bit and make them just a teeny bit shorter. So they're, they're almost not... even with the back. Right. You don't okay. want them to just pop out and that's all you use. When you look at the dog, your eye gets drawn to the butt cushions. We don't want to do that. Okay. So then what I do is I turn her around and I go from the front and meet it in the middle. Okay, so since we're not putting a band in her because she hates them, what I do is I kind of do this, this front little shelf over the eyes just like I do if I was actually going to scissor in an all top knot. So I pull from right behind the corner of the eye. I just pull that little bit forward and then I trim flat around like this in front of her eye. Because I feel like that keeps a lot of the poodle expression and it doesn't give that flat like I ran into a brick wall look but it keeps it out of her eyes, so she's not rubbing. But she can still have a little bit of hair so it doesn't take away from her expression, in my opinion. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did the other one. Comb her ears down. And you want this to blend over the top of the ear. You don't want to line. But you also don't want it to look like a flat mushroom either. too full on the side of her neck under here. So I'm going to get her ear out of the way. And I'm going to pull that in over her shoulder because I want her to have a longer neck. And I may even end up Pulling her jacket in a little bit tighter next to my groomer, too. to make an indentation over the ear.
So you're trying to not pull that top knot into the ear. Right, and for me up. coming from this way, it's hard because the that curve. the tip of the scissor will make an indentation there. We'll show on that side. See? I'm gonna cut that right on. Right, so I try to, that's why I try to do it this way because I'm trying not to, What year you were one of the top 15 groomers in the United States? Um, 2012 and 2014. So. Now because she's over. She is done. 